السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹ مائی نیم از ڈاکٹر محمد عدنان اسگر اینڈ ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس اباؤٹ دا کریکٹرائزیشن آف فارماسیوٹیکل مٹیریلس بائی یوزنگ سم تھرمل ٹیکنیکس دس سبجیکٹ از ایکچولی انڈر دا تھرمل انالیسس دیٹ وی ہیو آلریڈی اسٹڈیڈ سم آف دا امپورٹنٹ تھرمل انالیسس ٹیکنیکس دیٹ ووڈ بی ہیلپ فل فار دا designing and synthesis and for the characterization of the uh, recent inorganic materials. Dear students, so far we have discussed about uh, the pharmaceutical materials and uh, some research advance, advances in diffraction scanning calorimetry techniques and we have already discussed the modulated uh, diffraction scanning calorimetry which gives the uh, increased sensitivity, increased resolution while uh, separation of complex transitions along with some accurate measurements of crystallinity in semi-crystalline materials. Uh, this is actually the modulated diffraction scanning calorimetry and it have more advantages over uh, normal diffraction scanning calorimetry. Moreover, the T0 diffraction scanning calorimetry would also help, it, it, uh, help us to, to improve the baseline performance and uh, sensitivity along with the temperature resolution of the transitions. It gives uh, accurate results to find out the transition temperatures and different transitions phenomenon. Moreover, we have uh, some of uh, have quite uh, comprehensive discussions on pharmaceutical applications by using different thermal analysis techniques. Most important one was the diffraction scanning calorimetric technique and uh, it, it is believed that it would be act as a universal detector for the measuring of a wide variety of transitions that may be found in the pharmaceutical materials. It would be comprehensively uh, explain the transition points that may be found in the possible pharmaceutical materials. And uh, the applications that uh, was important is amorphous structures for the, uh, and amorphous structures we have already discussed about the glass transitions and detection of amorphous material in semi-crystalline compounds. Today we are going to discuss the crystallinity in detail while the melting and crystallization, purity, polymorphs and uh, however drug interactions, protein denaturation and freeze drying would also include in this lecture. We will discuss all the uh, possible applications, uh, measurements of the amorphous structure, crystallinity drug and protein denaturation and freeze drying. We have already discussed about the amorphous structures in detail and uh, today we are going to focus on the uh, crystallinity. Unlike glass transition that are often hard to detect, endotherms associated with the material melting are relatively high in NFG. The NFG may be measured in joule per gram and can easily be seen. However, this does not mean that it is always easy to measure crystallinity by diffraction scanning calorimetry. Actually, the diffraction scanning calorimetry user must constantly be aware of other transitions that appear as endothermic peaks and can be misinterpreted as melting. For example, uh, the endothermic peak between 42 and 100 degrees Celsius uh, in this figure is actually the result of water vaporization evaporation from the pinhole pan as a water molecule in lost from the monohydrate form of a drug. So it is believed that this uh, diagram is of 
that particular drug that is that have one what drop crystallization or we can say monohydrated direct drug so this temperature range would actually depicts this endothermic peak would actually depicts the uh, water of vaporization from this uh, from the pinhole pan so this is due to the uh, removal of hydrate hydration from the particular drug for this material which uh, is uh, highly crystalline we can say it's about 99.9% .9 crystalline the crystalline according to the x-ray diffraction results the crystal structure is also lost as a water when water evaporates the resulting amorphous material crystallize near 122 degree celsius here we can see this is actually uh, 122 degree celsius temperature and it would results amorphous material shifts into crystals and subsequently the melting of this crystal uh, the melting of this crystalline material or this uh, drug uh, would occur at about 174 degree celsius so this is actually the uh, depiction of the uh, DSC measurement of a monohydrated drug. We can set this one of the water molecule that was attached to the drug is actually evaporated in a wide temperature range that would start from the 40 degree Celsius to up to 100 degree Celsius. We can say it about 95 degree Celsius or 100 degree Celsius. In the wide temperature end, this endothermic peak actually depicts that one of the uh, water molecule that is that was at directly attached to any drug is released in the vapors form, and these vapors may escape from the uh, pinhole pan as a water molecule. So, at about uh, we can see this is actually the the temperature 122 which actually indicates the uh, crystallization of that amorphous compound we know that if uh, water of crystallization is lost from a crystalline compound the crystalline compound may become amorphous so this is actually the crystallization of amorphous drug into polymorph molting at about 100 and 22 degree Celsius while this is uh, uh, actually if we uh, continue heat that material uh, that drug we can see an abrupt uh, endothermic peak at about 174 degree Celsius which is actually the uh, melting point of this particular drug since most endothermic uh, transitions that can be confused with melting or kinetic events the kinetic events actually the evaporation may be the evaporation decomposition and uh, enthalpic recoveries at tg tg was known as glass transition temperature we have already discussed about glass transition temperature in our previous lectures it is uh, relatively easy to distinguish between melting and those transitions. This is actually done uh, by changing the heating rate over the range of 1 to 20 degrees Celsius per minute. The onset of true melting peak may shift very little with the temperature range of about one degree celsius with heating rate while uh, evaporation and decomposition peaks may shift by 10 degree celsius up down or sometime more 
we know that how melting peak of a particular drug change with heating rates of 1 5 or even 20 degrees celsius per minute but the shift in peak uh, in onset uh, may be of little change the peak temperature and uh, width to increase with heating rate but onset of true melting transition will change very slightly a very different uh, results may be obtained by using different type of uh, drugs at same heating rates the this means that the endothermic is really sometimes decomposition and not melting again uh, the true melting shifts may have very little with heating rate may have little relationship with heating rate when using aluminium sample pans uh, either crimped or hermetic and uh, we have discussed about the uh, about the pans and crimped and even hermetic in detail in different uh, previous lectures acetaminophen is actually an interesting material in that most pharmaceutical grade samples are usually completely crystalline in nature but uh, easily converted to a completely amorphous structure by cooling at rates of 20 degrees celsius per minute or higher from the above the melt in addition the crystal structure can exist in different forms and this is called the polymorphs which is uh, which we will discuss later in this lecture in detail this figure uh, 11 is actually shows that the first heat on the as received sample the fresh sample and the second heat after the sample may be cooled at about 120 degree celsius per minute from 200 degree celsius the first heat shows no glass transition or cold crystallization peak indicating it is a very highly crystalline after cooling the sample at 20 degree celsius per minute from 200 degree celsius the second heat shows a large glass transition and cold crystallization peak indicative of amorphous structure this is quite obvious in this picture the melting point is still very sharp indicating no decomposition but it has shifted to a lower temperature typical of a less stable polymorph moreover most pharmaceutical drugs uh, will not crystallize in the solid state once they are completely melted in addition uh, a highly percentage decompose while melting so this is the about about the uh, crystalline materials so the if we talk about the calorimetric purity the diffraction scanning calorimetry can be used to measure the uh, absolute purity of some crystalline compounds with very high sensitivity for detecting even small amounts of impurity in it this is actually due to the uh, melting point depression caused by the impurity which actually lowers and broadens the temperature range of melting
द मटीरियल्स फॉर्म ए यूटेक्टिक मिक्सचर दैट मेल्ट एट डिफरेंट टेम्परेचर एंड द मेल्टिंग पॉइंट ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर मटीरियल ब्रॉडनस कंसिडरेबली एट ऑल कंसनट्रेशन आर ऑफ इम्प्योरिटीज this is uh, actually quite advantages of uh, diffraction scanning calorimetry over the conventional diffraction scanning calorimetry so the demodulator diffraction scanning calorimetry is actually is quite sensitive and for the even in the form of find the purity of the material we have uh, uh, already seen an example that if a molecule or uh, drug is crystalline in nature and uh, there there should if they, we have uh, add we can add some kind of impurity in it that would be quite easy for the modulator diffraction calorimetry to find out the impurity and to find out the detect the impurity in our previous lectures we have already seen a uh, um, important role of modulated diffraction scanning calorimetry for the successful detection of phase transitions in different materials this uh, detection and our exploration of phase transition behavior which is shown by many materials including inorganic organic and inorganic organic hybrid and even the pharmaceutical materials this is actually uh, detected and explored with the help of uh, diffraction scanning calorimetry along with the uh, thermogravimetric analysis and dta which is the a uh, diffraction thermal analysis these combination uh, these combined techniques are the combination of these techniques would help us to for the successful detection of even phase transition in the materials so it uh, it is also quite helpful for us to and to estimate the purity of the crystalline material by using these techniques because if there would be any impurity the peaks may differ or sometime substitute their positions the substitution of position means the shifting of uh, endothermic peaks from their accurate position to somehow 10 or 20 degree celsius up and down with some time broaden the peaks or sometime it gives quite sharp peaks from the uh, normal peaks so it would also give us a clear uh, indication if there is any involvement of impurity in our desired pharmaceutical drug or material moreover diffraction scanning calorimetric purity technique uh, has several advantages it uh, actually includes for it have actually the it is actually the fast fast mean uh, it would take less than 30 minutes to perform a complete operation on a desired material so this 30 minutes is quite important and it's very very less time if we compared with the other thermal analysis techniques for the detection of purity or for the detection of phase transition material this is because uh, def in diffraction scanning calorimetry we are continuously using different purity gases one of the renowned one is the uh, uh, nitrogen gas sometime in the form of liquid nitrogen this would help us to decrease the temperature 
uh, in a very accurate manner and in a very short span of time for example if we want to scan any particular sample uh, either it's pharmace pharmaceutical in nature or uh, inorganic or sometimes hybrid in nature we can decrease the temperature by using a th uh, liquid nitrogen which is directly attached to the diffraction scanning calorimetric instrument and it would help us to decrease the temperature in a very accurate manner and in a very speedy way while uh, if we want to heat that particular sample from low temperature to room temperature or sometime high temperature there is a very fine type of furnace already in installed under the sample operators sample pans this uh, actually furnace increases the temperature uh, in a relative way it increases the temperature uh, in a quite controlled fashion and uh, it would give us very accurate results while heating so we were talking about the some of the advantages of diffraction scanning calorimetry the first uh, was uh, fast it is fast means less than 30 minutes is required to accomplish an operation the second one is uses small samples uses small sample mean we only need one milligram of any sample for the complete characterization of any thermal event that would occur that may occur in a sample so only one milligram of sample is would be quite enough for the successful uh, exploration of any uh, thermal events in a sample moreover third one is actually it does not require 100 percent pure sample of the material to be analyzed these are the three major applications or advantages of diffraction scanning calorimetry over other thermal techniques while uh, however there are some limitations are also there which which must be considered as well which includes the purity should be greater than 98 percent it means that if a sample is impure we can said uh, it can measure the different impure it can measure the different characterization events or endothermic events or thermal events even if the sample is impure but it should be greater than the its purity should be greater than the 98 percent so this is actually the limitation of the diffraction scanning calorimetric instrument the second is sample cannot decompose during melting so this is also the uh, another disadvantage of diffraction scanning calorimetry while uh, the third one is impurity cannot form a solid solid solution must be insoluble in solid and soluble in melt so this is the quite big limitation of refraction scanning calorimetry the last one if we consider the limitation of uh, diffraction scanning calorimetry it would be like it does not provide the identity of the impurity it can provide the identity of the desired sample the de desired sample may be a uh, inorganic compound organic compound or the combination of both hybrid material or the pharmaceutical compound it would help us to find the compound it would help us to find about the information about the sample but it would not help us to find to provide the 
identity of the impurity that may be present in the sample so this is these are the some of the limitations of diffraction scan calorimetry uh, so far we have discussed about the crystalline uh, crystallinity in terms of thermal analysis in pharmaceutical point of view and we were discussing the topic and we will discuss some polymorphs uh, about uh, polymorphs in pharmaceutical compounds in our next lecture thank you very much